Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin. Wassalatu wassalam khatiman nabiyin wa ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the second episode of a special edition of Building Bridges uh, Between the Faiths for uh, between ITV and IFRI uh, for this special Ramadan broadcast. Right? And you remember we are in the Islamic Hijri calendar 1442 and we are in uh, the month of April 2021 and uh, as we said that uh, for the blessed month of Ramadan we have this Saturday uh, 1 to 2 p.m. edition so you won't get any other uh, repeat episodes like normally used to get on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays it will be only on a Saturday afternoon uh, one to two and then inshallah when the blessed month of ramadan is over then we will get back to our normal scheduling uh, of the building bridges project well we welcome all our new viewers just so that you know we at building bridges say we are all the children of adam you know the the, the nations and tribes and, and the, the different branches of the tree of humanity but the abrahamic branch would say jews christians and muslims are the abrahamic family but if we belong to just the tribes and not necessarily of the Abrahamic branch. Islam still says that humanity is one family. And this year, particularly for this Ramadan, IT is running a team which is love, you know, all mankind. And you won't believe it. This was a banner that we've had standard on, IT, on our building bridges, ISLAM, which says, I shall love all mankind. So yes, uh, let's... Uh, take off from where we left let's get straight into it lots of things to cover and last uh, episode we we just brought up by the you know about the fasting but remember that we said last just to recap last episode we spoke about the quran saying that uh, ramadan is the month in which the quran was revealed and because of that we fast and this fasting was as it was in chapter 2 verse 183 this fasting was prescribed as it was prescribed to those that came, the prophets and communities that came before the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And we showed that, you know, from the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, that as we fast, so did Moses and Jesus and Abraham and, the, you know, the, the previous prophets, Jeremiah, peace be upon them all. They fasted, you know, sunrise to sunset, nothing per month. Same fast, same fast that we are fasting. So now let's, uh, we, that, we've done that in the last episode. But now let's focus on, on the, the, the purpose for or the, this Ramadan, one, or one of the reasons we fast, is to give thanks and honor this Quran, which was revealed in the blessed month of Ramadan, you remember? And we ended up last episode by saying that uh, just as the fasting is mentioned in the Bible, the Quran is mentioned in the Bible. So that's where we stopped our coming. And this episode is going to actually show us the Quran in the Bible. How's that? We're going to uh, show you. And obviously, we'll be uh, having time. We'll go further than that about different aspects about this, the Quran. Now, I remember while we uh, to talk about the Quran in the Bible, uh, we remember we said we want you to understand it in this light that uh, you have the Old Testament that was given to, which the Christians say was given to Moses, peace be upon him, but we Muslims call it the Torah in, in the original, even the Jews, the Jews use this word, the Torah, the law in the, in the Hebrew language was given to Moses, peace be upon him. And then Jesus, peace be upon him, uh, or the Christians call it the New Testament. And we say it was called the Injil in his Aramaic, the language that Jesus, peace be upon, upon him, spoke was Aramaic. And it was called uh, the Injil, like the gospel or the, you know, and, the, and then the Christians call it the New Testament. And Muhammad, peace be upon him, who came after him, was given the last, it is the last testament. It is the final testament. So you have the Old Testament, you have the New Testament, and the Quran is the last and final testament. So there we go. But we're going to show you now in this episode that this Quran, just as we say that, the, uh, you know, normally the system, the divine system of prophethood and the divine system of revealing itself to humanity and sending prophets to humanity. And we did a series uh, on prophets in the Quran and Bible. In fact, we are still carrying on. We, we just suspended that series because of this blessed month of Ramadan. If you recall, we did last, there was the prophet Jacob, peace be upon him, and his 12 sons. 
who are the, called the Israelites. You remember, we ended with that, uh, and now we're doing a special edition, the next, you know, for the blessed month of Ramadan. And when Ramadan ends, we're going to go back to the series, continue with the prophets of in the Quran and in the Bible. And the prophet that we're going to talk about is the prophet Yusuf, uh, Joseph, peace be upon him, Yusuf alayhi salam. So yes, so this is, uh, but in that series of prophets, we said that one of the features and one of the uh, ways in which God Almighty Allah SWT was doing this is that he always, the prophet that came before a prophet, prophesied the coming of the next prophet. He foretold to his people, look after me is coming, this prophet, after me is coming. And so there, there is like a, a, a relay, you know, in a relay race, the one, the one participant hands over the baton to the next one to run with. So this is how the prophets, they pass on the baton, they tell you about the other one that's coming. So just like as each prophet prophesies the coming of the next prophet, uh, the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was also prophesied in, 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 by the previous prophets. We, we, you know, we mentioned that as a topic on its own. And in the last segment, we will tell you where you can find these previous episodes. Um, but also, the prophets, uh, besides being prophesied in the coming of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, and the Prophet that was to come after them, the Quran, this Quran, this last testament and last and final revelation to mankind was foretold in the Bible. Now, that's very interesting. And, and I think we need to unpack this. Now, let's go to Isaiah chapter 29, verse 11. Yes, the first verse. Uh, uh, Isaiah says uh, this incident is, uh, let me read it and then we'll discuss it. Prophet Isaiah is saying, a prophet was given, the angel Gabriel came to him and said, read this. And that, and that prophet replied and, and said, I pray. He said, I cannot read and it is sealed. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, read this. And he said again, I pray. And he said, I cannot read. So it's appearing twice, right? Now this thing is appearing twice, you know. Now here's it there, right? Uh, the verse again, I've, I've put it again in Isaiah 29, 11. Read this, I pray. He said, I cannot read. Now look at in the Quran, in chapter 29, verse 48, I'm showing you the parallel verse. Isn't this program called Building Bridges? Isn't this program finding the common ground between the faiths? And now here's the common ground between Isaiah 29, 11, what the Quran is saying in chapter 29, verse 48, the Quran says, and you were not able to recite it before this revelation. Now were you able to transcribe it with your right hand. In that case, indeed, those who follow falsehood would have doubted. In fact, till today, unfortunately, till today, although history has proven the Prophet, peace be upon him, was born in the broad daylight of history. And history has shown that the Prophet couldn't read, nor could he write. And so here, Isaiah, the Quran 29:48 is is confirming what uh, Isaiah has said, uh, you know, about that he couldn't read pray. He says, I cannot read. But I want to take it, you know, actually one step further. And I want to show you that the actual incident, now this revelation, this read, now, you know, this read, the word read is actually the first revelation that came down in the cave of Hira, Iqra. You find that the, the, the Quran, the first five verses of the Quran started off with the word Iqra in Arabic. Read, recite. Iqra bismi rabbika lazi khalaq, khalaq al insan min ala, Iqra wa rabbukara. These five verses, which means in English, read in the name of your Lord who created you from a drop of consumption. I'll show you the verse just now. But the point I am highlighting, imagine that the prophet Isaiah, peace be upon him, who came so many, you know, uh, uh, generations before the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. What did the Prophet Isaiah say? The, a book is given to him and he says, read. And, and he says, I cannot read. Now, this incident in the cave of Hira is well, well, it happened by the way, this revelation took place in the blessed month of Ramadan, in the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan. Right, so this is what it is said, and it was said to him the angel Gabriel, the Holy Spirit, uh, the holy angel Gabriel, it said, Read, read, and the prophet replied, I cannot read. Now, look how this whole incident 
is exactly what Isaiah was prophesizing in the book of Isaiah chapter 29 verse 11. Exactly what happened in the cave of Hira in the blessed month of Ramadan, in the last 10 days of the blood of Ramadan. And we Muslims know it was even in one of the odd nights of the last 10 days, not just in the last 10 days, in one of the odd nights of the last 10 days of the month. Of. Muslims obviously have recorded all this accurately. These events in the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him, we have an accurate record. We know exactly which five verses were revealed, what they were in Arabic, because the Quran has then, ever since then, till today, has been memorized and memor preserved in memory and the writing. It also has been written. The Prophet, peace be upon him, had scribes who were writing it down. So we have a, a document accurate uh, uh, detailed uh, recordings of these happenings of what happened in the cave of Hira uh, on that night which was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah uh, in 29:11 and and the the the, the uh, what we'll do is you know to give you because we need to unpack this a little bit more because this prophecy is so profound and I think we need to spend more time to unpack it so stay tuned uh, we'll be back after the break Welcome back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, yes, we, are, we have showed you Isaiah 29, 11, where he says that, uh, you know, uh, a book is given to this prophet and he says, I cannot read. Now, this incident took place, as I said, in a cave, in a hill. It's called Jabal -e Nur, the mountain of light, a cave of Hira. The prophet used to go and seclude himself. Uh, in this cave for nights upon nights, meditating and crying his heart out to God Almighty Allah Subhanahu to help him uh, for his people who never received a prophet before the prophet, peace be upon him. And these people were, and you know, the job of a prophet is to guide people, uh, to, you know, to teach them morals and values. And the fact that the Arabs did not have a prophet, you know, come prior to the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in that the area, land of Arabia at that time. Uh, it means that they were, you know, they were doing all the wrong things and and he, you know, they were burying the girl babies alive and, and drinking and all the, the kind of vices and behavior. And he was crying all to God Almighty to help him. And that's when the help, the divine help came. That was God's plan to let that last prophet to humanity come from the, a nation that never received guidance before. So there was wisdom in that as well. So he had to, if he could bring that society right, then any society in the world in the future where there is no, where it's never received a prophet will be able to benefit from that same guidance. And that was the divine wisdom in, in doing that. And, and so the Prophet uh, was in this cave and, and what, here's the five verses, right? So here's the five verses that came. Uh, it is now in chapter 96, it's called Al Alak the Plot. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of God Almighty, the Gracious, the Merciful. Iqra, read. Iqra bismi rabbika lazi khalat. Read in the name of your Lord who created, created human beings, ma mankind from a clot of congealed blood. Iqra, read. And your Lord is most gracious. He who taught us the use of the pen, alama bil qalam, alam al insan, ma alam ya alam, taught human beings that which they knew not. Now, two things. These are the first five verses ever of the Quran, the beginning of the divine revelation, the beginning of the last and final testament to humanity, the beginning of the divine concluding its, 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 its mission of prophethood and guidance to humanity, a mission that started from Adam, peace be upon him, and Noah, and Enoch, and peace be upon all the prophets down the ages. And the Islamic tradition tells us that there were 124 thousand prophets that were sent by God Almighty Allah SWT to all the nations and tribes of the world. Not only, uh, you know, to every nation and tribe. Well, the Quran says to every nation and every tribe, God sent prophets in China, in Asia, in Africa, in Europe. God Almighty Allah has sent prophets everywhere. We did this in the series of prophethood. But the last revelation, the last and final prophet, God Almighty Allah chose to come from the Arabs who never received a prophet before the coming of the prophet, peace be upon him. And these were the first five verses of read. 
in the name of your Lord. And he said it twice. That's why in the book of Isaiah, you'll notice uh, Isaiah 29, the word really appears twice. Just look how, how beautiful, how beautiful the revelation, uh, uh, the, 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 the similarities fit in, the prophecy. Look how beautiful the prophecy of Isaiah fits in with the actual reality when it unfolded many centuries later in the life of the prophet, peace be upon him. And the angel said twice, read, and the prophet replied, I cannot read. Manabikari. Again he said, read, Ikra. And the Prophet replied, Manabikari, I cannot read. And then the angel in the tradition tells us, the Prophet narrated the angel Gabriel, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Gabriel, the angel of revelation. He 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 embraced the Prophet, embraced him. And then released him. And then he, he said, Iqra bisme rabbika lazi khalak. And it meant, because read, Iqra does not only mean read, but it means repeat after me. And he started to repeat the words, this, these five verses. The Prophet repeated it. And then Gabriel said, that's what I want you to do. I'm going to keep coming to you with, with revelation, and you must memorize it, but repeat it after me. And tell your companions to repeat it after me and to memorize it like that and repeat the, the recitation. And you know this whole incident? Let me tell you about this incident. This is the exact... So in other words, he was told not to physically read, but to repeat, to memorize, or to by heart it. So in a sense, in a sense, he put the words in the mouth of the prophet. The prophet had to repeat those words which Gabriel was saying. You see, so he had to repeat those words. So it's like Gabriel was putting the words in his mouth. Now, lo and behold, Look at another prophecy of the Quran in the Old Testament now also in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 18 and 19. This is God talking to Moses peace be upon him. In the Deuteronomy 18, 18, look how long was that now. Moses peace be upon him came even before Jesus peace be upon him. He was a prophet that was sent to the Israelites even before Jesus peace be upon him. So it's like over a thousand years. This prophecy is over a thousand years before the advent of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. God Almighty is talking to the, the Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. And he says, O oh Moses, I will raise up a prophet like unto you from among your brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command. Look at this prophecy. God is telling Moses, I will raise them a prophet like unto you from among thy brethren, from your cousins, from your brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command. How powerful is not this prophecy? Now, we just went through the cave of Hira and said, isn't it Gabriel? It's as if Gabriel put the words into the mouth of the prophet, peace be upon him, to say, repeat what I said. I will put my words in his mouth. And that's exactly how the divine revelation unfolded. That's 1,000 years before the prophet, the prophet Moses predicted this, prophesied this event. Uh, a few hundred years before, uh, the Prophet the prophet Isaiah, peace be upon him, was emphasizing that a book is given to him and he said, read. And he says, I cannot read. And you can see how these two verses in the Bible, Deuteronomy 18, 18 and Isaiah 29, how they're fitting in with the first revelation. And I want to just pause here with the Bible uh, things and uh, 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 verses and just go to a uh, tradition in Islam. You know, after this incident, dear viewers, the, the Prophet ﷺ was very taken aback by this incident. You can well imagine if me and you, I don't think we would have even managed it. You know, he had to be very strong to, 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 to receive this divine revelation. And he came down from the cave, you know, to his wife running, Zammiluni, Zammiluni, telling his beloved wife, Fatir, cover me. He was, he was, you know, he was, it was like a high voltage can well imagine oh, this divine experience, a high, the divine rays, you know how high voltage the divine rays is. What happens if you bring uh, ESCOM into the room direct? What if you bring ESCOM into the room direct into your room? What will happen? The whole room will, will catch on fire because it's high voltage. When, uh, where the, the light is generated at the turbines, at the source, it's very, very high voltage, thousands of megabyte watts, isn't it? So the divine, the divine uh, guidance, the, the divine message, the divine radiance is so bright 
which was, uh, but it had to be reduced to the problem. Gabriel came with it with high voltage. The problem was really receiving high voltage. You get the point. And he had to be put <coughs> resistors. <coughs> he had to be put in capacitors to manage this high. And that's why he was so hot and sweating, it says. And, and, and this is the high voltage he received. Therefore, he told his wife, cover me, cover me. And many days later, when the Prosalem, you know, uh, 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 came back to his normal, and, and, and Khadija, Radiyadana, his beloved wife, her uncle was a Waraka bin Nofal. Waraka bin Nofal was a, a well-learned priest, well-respected Christian priest in Mecca. And he was the uncle of the wife of the Prof, uh, Khadija, right, the wife of the Prophet. She, she said, look, this is a something strange. She went, she told the Prophet, let's go to my uncle. He's learned it in the books. You know, the, I, we, we did this when we did the series. He's called the Ahle Kitab. The Christians used to call these people the people of the book. They have a book, they had a Bible. You remember the Arabs couldn't read and write. So anyone had the book, if they had the title, hey, he's the learned one. He's, he, they are the people of the book. Let's go and see. And when Khadija Rajana went to Waraka bin Nofal, the priest, of uh, the learned Christian priest in Mecca, and narrated to him, Oh, my uncle, you know what? This is what happened. My husband, Muhammad, you know, he went in the cave. You know, he used to sit there and meditate. And then this angel appears to him and, and, and made him tell him to read. And he said he can't read and embraced him. And when she narrated the incident, lo and behold, what was the response of Waraka bin Nofal, the Christian, the learned Christian uh, who was learned in the scriptures at the time in the Bible. He says, what? Is that what happened? He is the prophet that is prophesied in our scriptures. He is the final messenger who was foretold in the Bible. You should say, what do you mean? It was already foretold. He says, yes, he was referring to Isaiah 29. He was referring to Deuteronomy 18.18. And now he, he was so surprised and excited that it had to be fulfilled in my niece's husband, you know, in the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And then they were excited too. So they say, you mean this incident is mentioned in your Bible? He say, yes. And he says, but I'm going to tell you one thing more. I am sad. So she said, why are you sad? Oh, my uncle. He says, I am sad because I won't be here when they're going to chase you out of this town, when they want to assassinate you, they're going to oppose you. And she said, is that also in your Bible? And he says, that's also in my Bible, predicted. And then they realized that they have a great task ahead of them. Stay tuned. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to this special Ramadan edition of Building Bridges where we are discussing about the Quran in the Bible, the prophecy of the Quran itself in the Bible. And we were discussing the incident of the cave of Hira and Waraka bin Nofal, the learned Christian priest uh, who said to uh, after the incident of the cave of Hira that the, the Prophet, he recognized the Prophet as the final messenger uh, you know, that is mentioned in the Bible. Now I want to go a little further with a few other verses in the Bible about the Quran. That's not the only verses. The, uh, Isaiah says something more. Now let's look at uh, uh, Isaiah 28, chapter 10 and 11. And look at what Isaiah is saying. Uh, Isaiah says about this last revelation, for precept up, must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line line upon line, here a little and there a little, for with a stammering lips and another tongue, for with a stammering lips and another tongue. This is the, the new revelation that will come. Now look at Isaiah, besides Isaiah saying the first part that happened in the cave of Hira, and I never mentioned the whole incident, right? And, and I look at how Isaiah is even unpacking, describing even more in detail what transpired in the cave of Hira on that night of Qadr. The Quran mentions that night is the night of power. The night of power is when the night the Quran was revealed. It says in another chapter of the Quran, Indeed, this Quran was revealed in the night of power. 
Now, I remember just before the break, we spoke about the power of the divine. That divine, when the revelation, when it comes down, the, like ESCOM and hydroelectricity, when it is generated at the turbines, it is at high power, high voltage. And here Allah says in this verse of the Quran that this was in the night of power. It actually is given that name, the night of power. It was revealed in the night of power when the high voltage was coming down. Now, you know, this interesting thing, well, let me finish that the whole theme of this power part of it, you know, of the high voltage part of it. You know, there's another verse in the Quran, uh, dear viewers, about this Quran. It's not just what I'm saying. The Quran itself, the Lord and creator of this universe, the author of this Quran himself, God Almighty Allah SWT says, Lo anzalna hadhal Quran ala jabalin, la ra'aytao khashyam mutasaddiyam min khashyatillah. God Almighty Allah SWT says himself in the Quran, Lo, verily, if we had to have revealed this Quran ala jabalin, onto a mountain, listen to the words, khashyam, mutasaddiyam, min khashyatillah, that this, this mountain would have crumbled down, an atomic, like an atom bomb, fell onto this mountain, that mountain would have crumbled and been annihilated, would have been reduced to rubble, a huge mountain. Picture the, the Drakensberg mountain. Picture the Table Mountain, you know, huge mountain. If this Quran would have come directly onto a mountain, that is the, the power, that is the energy that was in this, because it's divine revelation. That's why the Prophet said, whenever divine revelation comes to me, he used to get very hot, he used to sweat, he used to say at times it was like, you know, you get these bells ringing, like this church bells on a Sunday, the church people ring the bells and you hear it in the whole town. Now imagine if you are right by the bell, how loud that bell. He says, when the revelation comes, it's like bells ringing in my ear. That's how loud I used to get the sound. This is just to let you know of the intensity of the divine revelation, of how when it is transformed from the divine to the, to the physical world, you know. I'm asking you all a simple question. You know, science, I believe, science today is proving more and more uh, about revelation and about the proof of the existence of God. We're going to actually go later on, uh, probably the next episode, we'll be talking about uh, scientific evidence, scientific proof that this Quran is not uh, a human product. Leave alone the product of the Prophet Prisbam who couldn't read and write. But it's not even the product of a human mind. Because there are things in this Quran, scientific evidence, which was unknown in the time of the, of the Prophet peace be upon him. We'll come to that. I'm talking about the power. I'm talking about the, the divine energy that it took to receive this Quran, that the Prophet had to be wired up, so to say. He had to be, you know, put in this resistance to receive this divine revelation. And this is also you know, a very important aspect of the revelation itself. And that's why it is called the night of power. You know, the Quran is, it, this Quran was revealed in the night of power. You find in the last 10 days, which are coming very soon, uh, the Muslims, they, you know, they seclude themselves. Many Muslims who can seclude themselves into the mosque. They cut themselves, they go into the mosque for 10 days and 10 nights to experience some bit of this power you know, while they're secluded, like how the Prophet used to seclude himself in the cave and in the night of power, lo and behold, the divine revelation, you know, came to him. Now, Isaiah is saying something else here now, in 28 verse 10 and 11. And let's, let's go to this verse. Something else more is being told about this Quran. It says precept upon precept, which means step by step, stages. I will use the word stages upon stages. Instead of precept, you know, stage upon stage, part upon part, right? Line upon line. This is how, like in, in the first revelation, it was only five lines. Five lines and five lines. When the next revelation came, another five lines. Another pa part upon part. Do you see how it is said? Here Isaiah is hinting that this Quran wouldn't come all at one go. Like, you see the, the, the Ten Commandments, the Old Testament, the Bible tells us that the Ten Commandments, it was written on two slates, on stones, you know, God Almighty wrote them. And that also, Moses was having a, you know, a very a huge experience. It was a very overcoming experience, you know, uh, about receiving the divine revelation. And, and it was, but that came at one go. The tablets were, uh, God Almighty, the divine uh, you know, wrote on those tablets, 
and and Moses was sort of couldn't handle it. Uh, and 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 this is what was happening to the prophet and he started stammering with a stammering lip you see stammering lip and another tongue this quran came down now why stammering he was he was trembling because of the intensity you know when you are and when you are afraid or when you are uh, you know under in, in, in you know sometimes under intense uh, uh, physical you know uh, uh, some burden on you, some force on you, you start to stammer, you start to shiver. Don't all these things happen to you? This is showing the power of the divine revelation. I just want to digress a little bit, uh, and I think the Bible mentions this as well, but the Quran mentions this as well. You remember Moses, peace be upon him, when he was called to Mount Sinai, it's all related to divine, you know, the interaction with the divine. When, and the Quran tells us when Moses was on Mount Sinai, you remember the incident when he saw a burning fire and he told his family, let me go there, perhaps I will get some guidance and I'll get something there. And when he, he heard a voice, uh, oh Moses, remove thy shoe, for wherein thy put thy foot is holy ground. This is in Exodus, it's mentioned in the Old Testament. Remove thy ear. Now, now he's, he's starting to tremble because God is speaking directly to him. This is the voice of God, and a strange voice. And then in that conversation, remember he told uh, the Quran says, Moses told to God, uh, I want to see you. He says, God, now I'm hearing you, but I want to see you. And God said, Lantarani, Moses you do not have the capacity to see me. I am God. Even when he asked, who must I tell the Israelites? Well, when I go back, what must I tell them? Who, did, who was speaking to me? He said, tell them, God said, I am who I am. I am who I am. You all don't, I'm unseen. You can't grasp me. I grasp all vision, but no vision will be able to grasp me. But then when Moses insisted, according to the Quran, he says, God, but I want to see you. So God Almighty, I tell you, you see that mountain? Here's the mountain. Here, I'm, that's why I'm drawing the analogy. The, Moses was on a mountain and he made him look at another mountain, you know, a peak, another peak. He told God, told him, Moses, look at that peak. I'm going to cast a fraction. You want to see me? I'm going to cast a fraction of my tajalli, a fraction of my being onto that mountain. And when the moment God did that, an explosion took place. And Moses was not unconscious. Moses fell down unconscious because where God said a fraction of his divine ray, that, that it was an explosion happened. And Moses was not unconscious. And when he regained consciousness, he asked God for forgiveness. He said, yes, God, I know now I will not be able to bear your, your, your countenance. I won't be able to bear seeing you. But I had some experience of that. So this is, I'm using all these examples to show you how the divine, the process of divine revelation is, is a very uh, 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 heavy process. It's a very... Uh, overbearing process you yeah? get what we're trying to say therefore allah said in the quran now you understand if the quran was sent directly on a mountain which is god's word because the quran is the direct words of god almighty it is the direct words of god almighty allah it's very powerful that is why it was revealed in the night of power and that's why allah says if i had to have revealed it directly onto a mountain the force and energy is so big in it the mountain will crumble down as if atomic energy was released. So this is the beauty of the Quran. And here, uh, the because now here is Isaiah giving us a hint. Isaiah 28.10 is giving us a hint. Imagine, now that was the Quran, the whole Quran. That's what it was talking. The Quran was saying, Lo anzalna has a Quran. If the entire Quran, the entire 6,000 uh, odd verses were to be revealed in one go, a huge explosion. Therefore, it had to be revealed bit by bit, precept upon precept, line upon line. Do you get the point now? It had to be in small doses, in small radiations, so that we can receive it. So the Prophet received it and he could transmit it to us. Stay tuned. We'll be back uh, after the break for the last segment. And keep a pen ready. We will tell you, you know, how to, the details to contact us. And inshallah, uh, keep it locked on. We'll be back after the break.
Welcome back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To the last segment of Building Bridges uh, uh, Between the Fates. Remember, I said keep a pen ready. We'll give you our details so you can contact us, inshallah, uh, for your comments, your questions. Uh, we appreciate that. And even suggestions, you know, that you may have. Uh, now, uh, we were talking about this, still this prophecy of Isaiah, where he says that here a little, there a little, and so the Quran, look at what Isaiah was predicting in 2018. Now, dear viewers, ask any Muslim, go into the, you know, the historical uh, process of the revelation of the Quran. You know this here, a little and there a little, and bit by bit, the Quran took 23 years to complete. This process that started in the night of power, the, with those first five verses in the cave of Hira, Iqra, Bismi, read in the name, it took 23 years, for 23 years thereafter. Here a little, there a little, bit by bit, here a line, little line upon line, verse upon verse, little by little, over 23 years, the Quran took to reveal and complete this. Look how accurate this prediction is about what Isaiah is saying about the Quran. And that he said in another tongue. This in another tongue means it's not in the tongue of the Hebrews. In, in, not in the tongue of the Israelites. You understand? It's another tongue, in another language. So he's talking about another people, or the different nation or different people speak another language. So Isaiah is not only saying that the last revelation will be given to a prophet who, who is illiterate, uh, unlettered, who can't read and write, it will also be speaking in another tongue. He will not be an Israelite prophet. These are all predictions in the Bible, dear viewers. But now I want to come to explain to you this here a little. Now, why here a little and there? Besides line upon line, a little by little, it's also talking about place. If it's here a little and there a little, it's talking about a, a place. It's talking about, you know, where, where, where the places where, the, the, the localities where these verses will be revealed, isn't it? Now you ask again, anybody who is not a Muslim, who knows about the Quran, you know that the Prophet Muhammad had to leave Mecca and go to Medina, which is about 600 kilometers away. It is near to Johannesburg roughly, you know, in taking our South African cities together. And you remember uh, uh, Waraka bin Nofel, the Christian uh, uh, priest, who was learned in the, he even told them what was not even in the first five verses. The first five verses was talking about, you know, he cannot read, which Isaiah was saying. He says, but our books tell us that he will have to leave. They will attempt to kill the prophet, and they're going to oppose him. And he says, unfortunately, I won't be alive because he was old when that happened. Which means, the, so the prophet, for the next 10 years, I'm explaining here a little, there a little. I'm explaining the fulfillment of this prophecy that was mentioned by Isaiah in the Bible about this Quran, where he says here a little, there a little, because even the Prophet for the next 10 years, he was in Mecca, and even in Mecca, he was moving around. Mecca was a big city, you know, in the different places. He went to Taif, he's been to different places, south of, you know, Mecca, this, the neighboring places, and the revelations were coming in all oh, here a little, there. Can you see now what it is saying? Here a little, there a little, in the different localities, in the different villages around Mecca. And then he had to migrate. The Prophet and the Muslims had to leave Mecca and go 600 kilometers to a city of Medina. It was called Yatrib that time. And then the next 13 years. For the next 13 years, revelations were taking place in Medina, around Medina. And while he was on his way, on his way to Medina, all that, there were revelations taking place in all different locations. Now you can see for the next 10 years, revelations were taking around Medina, the towns and cities in Uth, in Uhud, in Badr, in, in all those other areas around there, the Prophet was going. Uh, and that is how accurately not did only isaiah say that he couldn't this prophet to whom this quran will be given will, 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 couldn't read and write and he will say i cannot read and uh, it will also be given in stages in bit by bit and also in different locations and it will be in another language which means he will not be an israelite prophet all these prophecies of isaiah is fulfilled in the prophet peace be upon him
that he, he said, I can't read and write. That he said in a stammering lips and he was taken aback and he was trembling. And he said that it will be in another language, which was the Arab language, and it will be revealed bit by bit over a period of time, which took 23 years. That was fulfilled and it will be in different locations. And it you'll find when you open a Quran, it'll tell you, is it a Meccan verse or a Medina verse? It's telling you where it was revealed, in the location it was revealed, in different locations, here a little, there a little, how accurately the Quran has been, uh, uh, you know, mentioned the prophecy of the coming of the Quran in such detail, which was fulfilled in the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him, which every Muslim knows, which even every uh, 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 scholar who's not a Muslim, there are many, many uh, scholars uh, who are even Christian scholars who studied the Quran, with the history of the Quran, the compilation of the Quran, and the Prophet of life, and they ended up by saying, this Quran is indeed a divine book. This is indeed a fulfillment of biblical prophecy as well. And this is the beauty of how the Quran was prophesied in the Bible. Uh, and I think, you know, it's for us to, to, to ponder on these things. You know, Reverend Bosworth Smith, I mean, I'm just quoting you one personality. Reverend Bosworth Smith, he says, a Quran, which is a book of code, a book of laws, a, you know, a book of rituals, and a Bible all in one. This is what the Re Reverend Bosworth Smith said. It has got everything. It's even got the Bible in it, combined in it. He says that, uh, you know, uh, this Quran uh, is indeed a divine revelation. This is Reverend Bosworth Smith, you know, that he accepts that the Quran is a divine book. It can be only come from God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's a, he's a reverend, he's a priest. So yes, dear listeners, take out your pens before we go further. And I just want to give you our details. You can contact us on 031-507-508. We have a lot of free information. We can even give you all these verses that you have here. Send us a WhatsApp on 074 5601786074560786 this is also a uh, you can call us on that number or sms on the number and visit our website www.ifri.com and our website now will give you more information about us and you can get more free in uh, literature and more free gifts uh, through the website or by sending us a WhatsApp or an SMS or you can email us with your comments and information to info info at ifri.com iifri.com and those of you who want to send uh, us write to us PO Box 60386 Phoenix 4068 now again I told you that you can get the past episodes clicking on YouTube you know, click, go on to YouTube and type my name, Rafi Hassan, and you will get it. But if you come to our website, www.ifuri.com, you'll see Building Bridges, you know, the multimedia. You'll see on, the, on our website, multimedia, uh, click the multimedia button and it will give you the Building Bridges, all the episodes with the links. You can see the title and click it and you can follow it. Well, let's go back now to, and while we're ending up to finish, because this episode, we are talking about the, the, the Quran in the Bible. Now I'm going to give you, besides giving you the details of the revelation of the Quran and how it, you know, it all fitted in with Isaiah's verses in 29. Look at what Isaiah hinted in chapter 21, verse 13. Remember we said in another language, in a foreign language, this prophet will be speaking in the foreign language. Isaiah in 21.13 was hinting to this already, the burden upon Arabia. Can you believe Isaiah is hinting, telling the Israelites, you know what? Arabia is going to, there's going to be a shift. There is going to be a shift and the shift is going to be to Arabia. In the forest in Arabia will ye lodge, O you traveling companions of Didanim. If you look at who's Didanim, if you Google type Didanim in a in a in a Bible dictionary or in a Bible web, it will tell you that Didanim is a place in Arabia. Traveling companions of Didanim. These were tribes, Arab tribes, right? And so this Isaiah is also hinting that that uh, Arabia, this last prophet, is going to come from Arabia. Then even in the book of John, chapter 16, verse 13. Jesus, peace be upon him, was predicting the coming of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the coming of this final testament. And look what he had to say. 
How be he? This is Jesus speaking in John chapter 16, verse 10. How be he? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he shall guide you unto all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you the things to come. And look at what Jesus is saying. Jesus, peace be upon him, he says, he, this prophet that is coming, right, he shall guide you unto all truth. He will be the last testament. He will complete everything. Because the verses before this, he said in, an, in John, he said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now, for I have to go. For if I do not go, the spirit of truth shall not come. Muhammad will not come. How be it he, when Muhammad comes, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all, because I did not complete. I have yet many things to say to you, but I haven't completed it. My mission is incomplete, but the one that is coming, he shall guide you unto all truth. He's going to complete everything, the revelation. And remember what Reverend Boswell Smith said, that the Quran is also a Bible in it. It's the Bible completed. It's the mission completed, which Jesus, peace be upon him, did not complete. But look at the one in, the, the, the one in red. Look at the two bottom last, the bottom red lines. But whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Whatever he hears, that shall he speak. Isn't that what happened in the cave? The angel came and said, read, repeat after me. He heard the word read and he repeated. And that's how the divine revelation came. So I hope that you enjoyed this uh, uh, Bible in the Quran. Same time, same place next week. You know, we will meet at one o'clock on Saturday uh, for the next two Saturdays during the blessed month of Ramadan. Pray for us as we pray for you. Let's derive the greatest benefiting benefits from this blessed month of Ramadan and keep the builders of the building bridges running. Uh, send us those uh, comments uh, and suggestions. Uh, till we meet again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.